welcome, 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 my current and future uh, viewers. If you are here, you are about to see an exciting, wonderful new Drama Mama investigation. Here on Drama Mama, we get to the bottom of internet drama so that you can understand what the heck is going on. Uh, it's uh, We try to make it as easy as possible, and one of our main goals is that we always try to provide the receipts. Our goal is to get to the bottom of a drama before we come to any major conclusions. Now, sometimes that can be a little hard. Today, it's a little hard to avoid coming to any conclusions, but we're going to do our best nonetheless. Today, we are going to be talking about libs of TikTok, doxing, and grooming. That's a weird combination of words. And um, you might think, well, what the hell is a libs of TikTok? Uh, oh, you're about to find out. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you're if you're excited about this, smack the like button, smack the subscribe button, ring that damn bell and press all or whatever they tell you to do. We would love to have you. Uh, I uh, am 100% viewer supported. So throw some donuts my way, throw some likes, and we'd love to see you here sometime. Uh, this is Drama Mama. Get fucking ready for it. Let's do it. All right, everybody. So for those of you who do not know, Libs of TikTok is a absolutely enormous Twitter Twitter account. Um, like, I mean, huge. Uh, I'm going to get their exact current count right now. Here, we can show you the account right here, okay? Libs of TikTok, bringing you news you won't see anywhere else. All videos belong to their respective owners. Libs of TikTok at gmail.com, DM submissions. They have 898,000 subscribers on Twitter, okay? Um, that's a lot. That is a enormous account on Twitter. Uh, that is so big. It's like, I mean, what? What's Ben Shapiro even have? Ben Shapiro has 3.9 million. So Ben Shapiro, literally one of the most famous, like, political talking heads on the right, has 3.9. This guy's got a fucking, a third of his followers. And this is just an account that posts libs, uh, lib videos and, and pictures from TikTok. Now, it's funny. I want you to notice something about this. And there's some things I want to bring attention to here because I think they're important. Bringing you news you won't see anywhere else. So this account, even though it's a a, a, a gimmick Twitter account, it calls itself uh, the news you won't see anywhere else. Okay, so they frame themselves as news in the first place. That's a little bit odd, okay? Now, uh, nothing in... Nothing one like completely wrong with that. We do so, like news coverage. I I sell myself as a political edutainer, and I say that I do news coverage, not news, because I basically never report on news. For example, today I did news, and it was boring as hell because it turns out it was just bad information, um, bad communication from the Capitol Police. That's why I don't do news. Uh, news requires certain contacts that the average person can't get access to and that's why we hold journalists to a higher standard it's pretty simple you know thank you very much for the five dollar dono socialist potato deeply appreciate that so libs of tiktok has been in a bit of, let's just say libs of tiktok has become in the spotlight recently thanks to an article which we are going to read today now um it's just, it's just really interesting here. I want to show you the sort of things that this, sh that this uh, account posts, okay? The left is upset that I called a woman teaching sex education to children a predator. Obviously, no context was provided. It's referring to this video of a woman who wants to teach toddlers to masturbate. The left is defending this. Now, of course, um, all of this shit is, is, is garbage. What they do is they grab random things that they think looks bad and they repost it. They're a meme account. They're not a news account, even though they claim to be. Here's an example of an educator who lost their job after I posted their own video. A professor who wants to destigmatize pedophilia. This is who the left is defending. Now, you might remember a couple of months ago, we looked into an example of accounts like this claiming that someone was a pedophile. And as it turns out, they weren't. In fact, they had been pretty clear that they were more interested in preventing pedophilia than anything else. Um, but they didn't like this person because they were liberal. And so they said, well, you're a liberal and you're fighting against pedophilia. Well, we can just call you a pedophile. 
It's wild. They do this all the time. Now, you can tell already that this account right here is boasting. This is an example of an educator who lost their job after I posted their own video. This is an account that is boasting about the fact that they can get people fired. Notice how when the left cry about L-O-T-T -T, exposing teachers and getting teachers fired, they never include the actual video. It's always a screenshot or no context at all. They never, they know that if they show the footage of these teachers, their outrage would be discredited. Well, let's watch this one. Do you want to watch this one? Let's see. They call this non-binary assistant professor at Old Dominion University is trying to normalize the term MAP. Let's hear. Jim. Um, I use the term minor attracted person or MAP uh, in the title and throughout the book for multiple reasons. Um, first of all, because I think it's important to use terminology for groups that members of that group want others to use for them. Um, and MAP advocacy groups like Before You Act um, have advocated for use of the term MAP. Um, they've advocated for it primarily because it's less stigmatizing than other terms like pedophile. Uh, a lot of people, when they hear the term pedophile, they automatically assume that it means a sex offender. Uh, and that isn't true, and it leads to a lot of misconceptions about attractions toward minors. Um, I've definitely heard the idea that you brought up, though, that the use of the term minor attracted person suggests that it's okay to be attracted to children. Uh, but using a term that communicates who someone is attracted to it doesn't indicate anything about the morality of that attraction. Thanks so much for that. Okay. So, we just watched this right here, okay? We just watched this right here. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are going to disagree with what was said in the video. However, I will point out, this person is not advocating for pedophilia. They're not doing anything other than saying, in my book, I use this terminology for these reasons. Now, it's interesting because we don't have any context for what the fuck they're talking about. We don't know what this what this person is talking about. We don't know any of the greater context. We don't even know what this book is about. Should we find out? Uh, let's Question. let's see if we can figure out what what the uh, what the book was. Does it come up on the screen? I swear to God, it came up on the screen. Remember, so much for that question. Uh, reason. Here we go. Alan Walker, author of A Long Dark Shadow. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at this. Oh, oh, interesting. Okay, well, this is going to be really interesting. Hmm. A long, dark shadow. Minor attracted people and their pursuit of dignity. The pandemic has created... Ma okay, so wait, wait a minute. This is challenging widespread assumptions that people who are pre preferentially attracted to minors, often referred to as pedophiles, are necessary also pre pre predators and sex offenders. This book takes readers into the lives of non-offending minor attracted people. There is little research into non-offending groups, a group whose experiences offer value. So right away, by the way, I just want to point out, I just want to point out real quick, they lied. This person, they, they're, 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 they're misleading, I should say. Technically, they are saying this person is trying to normalize the term. What they leave out is that this is a book talking about people who specifically go out of their way to not harm others. And how the, the book is literally, we just read this description. Navigating guilt, shame, and fear, this universally maligned group demonstrates remarkable resilience and commitment to living without offending and supporting and educating others. This is a book that seriously attempts to help people who are afraid of offending not offend, not hurt people. This is a book that is about protecting children, that is about protecting people so that they don't become offending, uh, uh, offending individuals. So what they frame it as is, oh, look at this. Here's this trans non-binary person talking about minor attracted people. And look at the quote tweets. You guys want to look at the quote tweets here? We could also go look at the book reviews. Remember when queer was derogatory? Pepperidge Farms does. What the fuck? This guy is the radical left is defending. Nobody's, first of all, nobody's defended this guy. This is a random author who wrote a, an a academically cited book about a, a serious issue. It's real simple. If you support like this being anywhere near kids, much less a teacher, you're a pedophile. Notice they're at a university. This is not a teacher at a, as a children's school. They leave that out, of course. This is a person at a fucking university. Pedophilia is not okay and never will be. They explicitly talk about this. The book, they talk about this in the description. 
So this is what they do. This is what libs of TikTok does. Libs of TikTok, they take people out of context, saying things that they seem are bad, usually gay people, black people, uh, you know, minorities, basically, and they try to make them look as bad as possible. And because the internet uh, operates so frequently on optics, aka contextless sh snippets of information that approves your biases in advance, this is a very popular account. And it's interesting. You can go through their whole list and you'll see all these times. And look at that. We just did what they said that the left never does. Look at this an example. Here we go down here. Notice how when the left cry about libs of TikTok exposing teachers and getting teachers, they never include the actual video. We just watched the actual video and we went and looked up the book and what it's actually about. Turns out what you've reported is nothing. You're you're implicitly implying this person is dangerous when all they're doing is writing a book about something that they studied for a university. Genuinely ridiculous. But it's okay. There's many of these. Um, they, they do all kinds of stuff. Like, this is their entire account. Their entire account is, of course, retweeting uh, people like, uh, like uh, Tucker Carlson. Uh, all of these sorts of uh, all of these people, they love they love to retweet. Oh, let's see. What's this one? What's this? What do we got here? Just for calling out online harassment. They'll, they'll threaten children. They'll threaten my parents. I've had to remove every single social tie. I had severe PTSD from this. I, I contemplated suicide. It got really bad. You feel like any little piece... I don't even know what this is. I don't know how to parse this at all. I don't know what they're trying to say here. So as you can see, their big thing is right now they're focusing on the person who wrote the article that we are about to read. But you can see the sort of things that they tend to post in general. They tend to post, uh, well, right now they're really obsessed with this beef that they have with this, uh, with this writer. But if you go through, you see all kinds of videos. Oh, look at this. Here's one of them making fun of, uh, uh, of Jeffrey Marsh. Let's take a look. Let's hear. Here is Madison Cawthorn's definition of a woman. X chromosomes no tallywhacker. And this gives me a chance to talk about biological essentialism. <laughs> um, first of all, it's not true. People have all kinds of chromosomes and all kinds of bodies. Women who've had hysterectomies, people born with certain conditions, but that's almost immaterial. Number two, it is a system of oppression. Gender is a hierarchy and a system of oppression. And the easier it is to define gender, the easier it is to keep the oppression going. It's dangerous. Okay, so Here is we shouldn't define the word woman because gender is a system of oppression. You notice what they're kind of going for here? They just kind of like feign and vaguely gesture at like bad things. This is what they do. They put people on blast and they aim at them to get their fans angry to go scream at them. It's wild. Oh, here we go. Look at this. Why does this keep happening? Uh, a contextless New York Post article, Ludlow Public Schools secretly promoted our kids' gender transition. Parents allege they don't show the actual article. They just show why does this keep happening? Florida teachers upset that teachers won't be able to talk about their sexuality and claim simply saying the word gay can get you po fired. So here you go. They've got their username on there so they can tell. They repost it. Easy. You can go yell at this person. Look, she's she's a random TikToker. Go get mad. Also, yeah, Jeffrey Marsh is super wholesome individual. So... U of NH professor says it's ineffective to assume a sexual relationship between young people and adults is predatory and criminal. This is just a random, we don't even know anything. We don't even know if this guy's a liberal. Is this guy a leftist? Is this guy a liberal? Who knows? He's just a random professor saying something that can be interpreted as loosely offensive, maybe? The term birthing parent on patient forums. They also allow the person giving birth to use father or parent on their... Birth certificate. Okay, who cares? Why is this a why do they make this a big deal? But then again, you look at the responses. Let's just roll through and look at the responses here. Clowns. It's called surrogacy. This form needs to be able to be used for that. Time to end this madness. Only three options. Clearly, this document is alphabet phobic. You can see there you can see the responses here are are exactly what you'd expect. Madness has consumed the world. 
What is this world coming to? This is insulting to every woman who ever gave birth, okay? Go to a different hospital. I wouldn't want people whose judgment is so poor to be making important dis medical decisions for me or my wife. So lots of soy facing, you can see, that that's sort of the approach of this entire account. Now, there's been there's been all kinds of situations, as it turns out, where their, uh, their unique approach to journalism, to reporting news that nobody else will tell you. Remember, that's what they call themselves. They call themselves a news organization uh, that will bring you the news that nobody else will, will tell you. A lot of what it is, is uh, taking small TikTok accounts of, you know, often kids, literal kids, who are talking about um, LGBT issues, who maybe have a cringe take or something. And then, um, and then they take that and they blow it up to um, a million followers, a million hostile, angry Tucker Carlson followers, which results in accounts being swarmed with legitimate hatred, with fuckloads of hatred. You can even see it in the comments, but this is how they do things. And as it turns out, they are literally open about the fact that they get people fired, that their, that their thing that they do is they... Sh they shine a light on groomers, pedophiles, whatever they want to make up and get people fired. Do we think it's really fair that somebody gets fired because of they because they're talking on a random call um, and somebody videotapes that call and when in, in that call they're talking about the book that they wrote that's about an incredibly complicated issue and approaches it from an academic angle? Do we really think that's a fair? Do we think this is justice? Do we think that's good? Nah, I don't, I don't think so. It's a little weird. It's a little weird. Almost seems like what they've made is an account that's devoted to harassing random marginalized people that they disagree with. Almost like that's their entire goal is to find the most vulnerable people that they can and subject them to internet hate. Weird. Interesting. Well, that brings us to today. Which we have to read an article together. All right. Are we fucking ready for this? I'm going to grab this this article for you, okay? Meet the woman behind the libs of TikTok secretly fueling the right's outrage machine. A popular Twitter account has morphed into a social media phenomenon, spreading anti-LGBTQ sentiment and shaping public discourse. Let's read it. On March 8th, a Twitter account called Libs of TikTok posted a video of a woman teaching sex education to children in Kentucky, calling the woman in the video a predator. The next evening, the same clip was then featured on Laura Ingram's Fox News program, prompting the host to ask, when did our public schools, any schools, become what are essentially grooming centers for gender identity radicals? Libs of TikTok repost a steady stream of TikTok videos and social media posts, primarily from LGBTQ people, often including incendiary framing designed to generate outrage. We've seen that now ourselves. Videos shared from the account quickly find their way to the most influential names in right-wing media. The account has emerged as a powerful force on the internet, shaping right-wing media, impacting anti-LGBTQ plus legislation, and influencing millions by posting viral videos aimed at inciting outrage among the right. The anonymous account's impact is deep and far-reaching. Its content is amplified by high-profile media figures, politicians, and right-wing influencers. Its tweets reach millions, with influence spreading far beyond its more than 64, uh, 60, 648,000 Twitter followers. God, I'm so sorry. Libs of TikTok has become an agenda setter in right-wing online discourse, and the content it surfaces shows a direct correlation with the recent push in legislation and rhetoric directly targeting the LGBTQ community. So as you can see, this article makes the case that this enormous account is pushing certain sentiments using manipulative framing and outrage and outrage marketing functionally. And it's not just this account. This account is being cited. It's being sourced by much more hateful and much more powerful sources like Fox News. Let's continue. 
Libs of TikTok is basically acting as a wire service for the broader right-wing media ecosystem, says Ari Drennan, an LGBTQ program director for Media Matters, a pro progressive media watchdog group. It's been shaping public policy in a real way, and it's been affecting teachers' ability to feel safe in their classrooms. The account has been promoted by podcast host Joe Rogan, and it's been featured in the New York Post, The Federalist, The Post Millennial, and a slew of other far-right news sites. Megan McCain has retweeted it. The online influencer Glenn, Glen wow, Glenn Greenwald, Glenn Greenwald, has amplified it to his 1.8 million Twitter followers while calling himself the account's godfather. Last Thursday, the woman behind the account appeared anonymously on Tucker Carlson's show to complain about being temporarily suspended for violating Twitter's community guidelines. Hmm. Fox News often creates news packages around the content that libs of TikTok has surfaced. The role I've seen this account playing is finding new characters for right-wing propaganda, says Jillian Brandsetter, uh, a media strategist for the ACLU. It's relying on an endless stream of content from TikTok and the internet to cast any individual trans person as a new villain in their story. Throughout its increasingly popular posts and despite numerous media appearances, the account has remained anonymous, but the identity of the operator of libs of TikTok is traceable through a complex online history and reveals someone who has been plugged into right-wing discourse for, for two years and is now helping to drive it. So, this is where we're going to get to the sort of, uh, what is, what is the heart of this drama? Uh, is it okay to dox um a an account like this if somebody is running an account with nearly a million subscribers that is regularly contributing to extremely intense political news cycles with allegations of uh pedophilia grooming grooming and all kinds of other things is it reasonable to unmask that person and i think a lot of people um have uh, sort of weird views on this. Now, personally, I think there's a lot there's a lot of things that go into deciding whether or not it's okay to unmask someone. And I think that the usual uh, measure is um, whether that person is having a meaningful impact on public discourse. Um, if someone is a public figure, if someone has enough influence that their actions are impacting the lives of others in a meaningful way and i don't mean just like people talking or reading a blog i mean you write something and lots of people go do something in response to what you've written you write something and lots of people go and move you have some responsibilities as a public figure at that point and if what you're doing is targeted very severely at specific groups of people I think it's reasonable for journalists to want to know who's behind this particular force. I also think that um, this is especially true when people are claiming that to be news. News is one of those things that is very manipulative. And in America, we have a very low standard. We have very low journalistic standards, all things considered in America. In America, um, what like Fox is able to call itself news, even though most of what they talk about is opinion. Um, even MSNBC with all of their most popular shows being opinion shows, they're still able to call themselves a news show. And that's because of a bunch of technicalities. But generally when we consider journalism, we consider it a, a role that is, that is required to have certain, um, a certain, uh, rules. It is a role that it has certain restrictions that if you are going to be calling yourself a reporter, if you're going to be calling yourself a news outlet, if you're going to be claiming to be giving people facts, then you actually, there are some things that you're supposed to do that people can look out for so that they don't get taken advantage of, so they don't get lied to, so they don't get manipulated. Fortunately, um, let's just say that journalistic integrity has always been questionable, but especially these days, functionally doesn't exist. So, um, when you claim to be running a news account and your news is regularly misleading, um, regularly violates even the most generous and, and, and light, 
um, journalistic standards, when you use your platform to affect the lives of lots of individual people and to an effect a political agenda, I think it's hard to say, it's hard to claim that that person shouldn't at least be like that people shouldn't at least know who's doing it. It feels important, in fact, that you know what the biases are and what their connections are. I feel like that's relatively important information. Now, conservatives, of course, are very angry about this. But as always, conservatives are pretty fucking hypocritical. What they say, what they say is, oh, this person ran a, uh, a you know, they just ran a meme account. They were just posting memes, you know, even though the account literally calls itself a news source and openly boasts about getting people's uh, getting people removed from their job because of the public, the public's uh, 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 outcry that they're able to generate with their posts. I don't think it's fair to say that this is just a meme account or that this is some innocent person. This is somebody who's grabbing other people's work, putting them in front of a lot of people and generally framing it with a great amount of negativity. In addition, we know what happens to the people who are featured on Libs of TikTok. In fact, Libs of TikTok is pretty happy about it. We just looked on, on a cursory scroll through there, like five tweets down on their homepage is them boasting about them getting somebody fired. If you get somebody fired, you're doing as much as a journalist uncovering, uh, uncovering your name. If you run an account on the internet, you putting somebody on blast in a way that changes their life forever, that makes them lose their, their life and perhaps suffer horrifically. Um, that is a major action. And it's certainly, at the very least, on par with having your name revealed. But notice that the conservatives are constantly saying, oh, they doxed libs of TikTok. This journalist got paid by Bezos and, and doxed, doxed the libs of TikTok. And they never cared that, that the libs of TikTok literally got multiple people in trouble for stuff they didn't do by falsely framing people and, and using language like pedophile and groomer. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Uh, sure is interesting how the same people pearl clutching right now had no problems with with Republicans taking actual lawsuits to un unmask the Devin Nunes's cow cow account. Do you guys remember that? You remember when Republicans were all like, we should sue the hell out of Devin Nunes's cow because this is hurtful. And that was just a parody account making fun of Devin Nunes. So, yeah, there's no consistency from the right on this. They don't care. So I think that like the claim that that like she got doxxed, I don't think, first of all, that it's fair to call this doxing. Doxing is generally refers to a otherwise anonymous person on the Internet, um, usually someone with a small or uh, or um, unsubstantial or non-existent following getting their personal information put out. Um, somebody posting a picture of me of my face would not be doxing. Somebody posting my personal home address, phone number, credit card accounts, that would be doxing. Um, a giant public figure, uh, like it being revealed who this giant public figure account is, is not doxing. That's just who runs this account. That's just asking who the hell is running this misinformation network. Yeah, if what happened to her was doxing, then what she's done to hundreds of LGBT people... LGBT people is doxing. It's worse than doxing because keep in mind that this person has a almost 1 million member strong public platform by which they can defend themselves, by which they can call for support. Small uh, kids on TikTok who get blown up by libs of TikTok don't have that. These are sometimes literal high school kids whose families get inundated with bullshit. It's, it's actually, it's hard for people to understand. Like, I've talked about how hard it can be getting brigaded by communities that are um, bigger than mine um, by a long shot. Can you imagine getting brigaded by Fox News and you're just a, you're just your everyday person doing your job or doing your thing? It's wild. Thanks for the archive. I appreciate it. I have that open. There's a certain amount of power I feel that makes it no longer doxing and more so just public info that uh, info that the public has a right to. Yeah, I think that's a reasonable conclusion. 
So I wanted to say this before we jump in to the unmasking of this individual. I personally do not think that unmasking libs of TikTok is a good example of doxing. However, we're going to go and we're going to take a look and we're going to talk about it anyway. So let's finish this article. I just wanted to get that out there, my opinion on that particular thing. Let's take a look. An account in search of a voice and a big break from Joe Rogan. Chaya Raichik has been working as a real estate salesperson in Brooklyn when in early November of 2020, she created the account that would eventually become Libs of TikTok. Under her first handle, Shia69830522, she minimized COVID, cast doubt on the election results, and promoted a dubious story about a child sex trafficking ring. On November 23, 2022, or sorry, 2020, Raichik changed handles, this time going by Shia Ray and identifying herself publicly as a real estate investor in Brooklyn. She began doubling down on election fraud conspiracy conspiracy using QAnon related language. Early that December, she joked about launching a t clothing line titled Voter Fraud is Real. In January 2021, Raichik started talking about traveling to D.C. to support Trump on January 6th at the Stop the Steal rally. When violence broke out at the Capitol, she tweeted a play-by-play -play account claiming to be on the ground. There were They were rubber bullets from law enforcement. One hit right next to me, she said. She posted videos from the crowd and spoke of tear gas being deployed nearby. After saying she left the riot, she used Twitter to downplay the event, claiming it was peaceful compared to a BLM protest. Nice. Damn. Interesting, huh? Later that month, Raichik cycled through two more Twitter names, this time focusing on state politicians, first under the handle Chaya Raichik and the display name Chaya Raichik. Okay, this person, doc, this person put their real name out there. Straight up. They did, they, they made their own account that. Then under the new handle, Cuomo must go. She railed against New York government Andrew Cuomo calling for him to resign. She promoted the efforts to recall Governor Gavin Newsom, and she also began posting about Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, calling him actually brilliant. Nice. Early last March, she pr she pivoted to a parody account titled Houseplant POTUS, pretending to tweet as if she was a houseplant living with President Biden. She revamped her avatar to look like a small shrub with Biden's face on the leaves. At that point in time, she also claimed to be proudly Orthodox Jewish, live in Brooklyn, and work in real estate. But the houseplant parody never took off. On April 19th, she pivoted her accounts once again, this time to Libs of TikTok. Just four months after getting started, Libs of TikTok got its big break. Joe Rogan started promoting the account to millions of listeners of uh, of his hit podcast. He mentioned it several times on the show in August, then again in late September. Libs of TikTok is one of the greatest fucking accounts of all time, he said. With his seal of approval, Raichik's following skyrocketed. Libs of TikTok gained more prominence throughout the end of last year, cementing its spot in the right-wing media outrage cycle. Its attacks on the LGBT community also escalated. By January, Raichik's page was leaning hard into groomer discourse by calling for any teacher who comes out as gay to their students to be fired on the spot. Yeah, here's a great example of this. You can see this right here. Any teacher who utters the words, I came out to my students, should be fired on the spot. And there they have a link to this woman... Just a random lesbian teacher who came out to her students. Look at this shit. I remember a time when teachers protected kids from inappropriate behavior in the classroom. Why subject your students to this kind of abuse? If you come out, you go out. Not worthy to be called a teacher. Neither is she worthy to have a job. The fact these people are teaching children is insanely scary. Random teacher... Just says, let's see, want to watch the video? Can we watch it? Can we get the original? Let's see, can we find this original one or has this been deleted? Let's find out. Oh, they deleted it. How convenient. Damn, libs of TikTok hiding it. Fucking hiding it. Let's see this one. Oh, here you go. Oh, damn, look at this from libs of TikTok grooming. If your parents don't accept you for who you are, fuck them. I'm your parents now. Oklahoma middle school teacher. This teacher was let go after complaints of grooming. And this TikTok and others containing questionable content were brought to the principal's attention. Let's find out. Stay punk. Hey, if your parents don't love and accept you for who you are this Christmas, fuck them. I'm your parents now. I'm proud of you. Drink some water. I love you. Bye.
literally just an encouraging Christmas thing that says, I love you and you're good if your parents are bad to you. This person got fired because of libs of TikTok. Just so you know. Here you go. Illinois Education Standard says grades K through 2 should learn about gender, gender identity, and gender stereotypes. Grades 3 to 5 learn about masturbation, puberty blockers, and trans children. Literal grooming. Homeschool your kids. So first of all, I would consider this. This is like claiming that it's literal grooming to have a sex ed class uh, in, in school is first of all fucking ridiculous. But secondly, literal libel. Literal libel. They're just saying Illinois education. And look at this. They have all this info in here. They have info as to where it comes from. This is all on here as to which schools it is. They're telling people like what materials are being used. Disney employees in California stage a walkout while chanting say gay to protest Florida's anti-grooming bill. Notice how they frame it. Florida's don't say gay bill is in their mind an anti-grooming bill. A bill that prevents you from talking to your students about being gay. The schools are obsessed with sexualizing and grooming kids. Pete Buttigieg's husband grooming kids and mocking the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's look at this video, shall we? All right. I pledge my heart. I pledge my heart. To the rainbow. To the rainbow. Of the not-so-typical gay camp. Of the not-so-typical gay camp. One camp. Full of pride, full of pride, indivisible, indivisible, with affirmation and equal rights for all. With affirmation and equal rights for all. Watch your head. Oh yeah, grooming guys. Super, super grooming. Do you guys you want to know? Let's just take a moment, shall we? Let's take a moment and look up the definition of grooming, shall we? Let's look it up, shall we? Let's let's fucking let's fucking look it up. Oh hey, look at this. This is a whole article. Oh, interesting. Here's from sexualabuselawfirm.com. What is sexual grooming? Identifying the six stages. The six stages of sexual grooming. Targeting a victim. First, the offender targets a particular child. Minors are more commonly targeted due to perceived gullibility and naivety. Victims are often selected based on perceived physical attractiveness, ease of access, or vulnerability. Two, gain trust. A sex offender offers initial friendliness to get victims to let their guard down. The abuser then observes the child, asks questions to get to know how the child's situation, and looks for needs to exploit. Filling a need. Offenders may prey on a teen's insecurities by lavishing the victim with praise and emphasizing the unique nature of their loving and exclusive relationship. Perpetrator poses as a non-threatening person. Child molesters strive to be the sole provider of something the child wants or needs, such as a phone, a ride home, something to eat, a place to say, adult supervision, an expensive outing, money, invitation to parties, prohibited substances, uh, a unique friendship and attention, a sense of love and value, specialized knowledge or skills. Four, isolating the child. Five, sexual contact. Six, maintaining control. That is grooming. Grooming is not when you have a conversation with young people about being gay. Not even close. It's not even, even close. Not even a stretch can be, like, it's just a lie. They're just lying. This is just open, disgusting, perpetual lies. Look at this. Teachers at Pike School doesn't want parent to find this TikTok. She leads a gay straight alliance club and lets the students tell their parents it's a study group. We have seen multiple examples of already of teachers grooming kids in a GSA club behind parents' backs. Oh yeah, you have? You got any stories of that? Bet you don't. Beaverton SD. This is a school district. We, look at this. This is the actual school district. They have tagged in their in their post. Why are you grooming kids? And this is because they there is a slide about sexual orientation. Three slides about sexual orientation leads to this account accusing an entire fucking school district of grooming kids and they link the school district's twitter there, there is no other way around this except that they can hope to get this school district and all of the people who work in it harassed to hell and back because of three slides discussing sexuality here we go another one hi uh hi uh 
look at this. This is the, here we go. Here's interesting. Look at this. Hi, M. Hans Johnson. Who is M. Hans Johnson? He has three, 743 followers. The superintendent of the Eau Claire district, uh, area school district. Dad, husband, educator, and Chicago bear fan. Phillips, uh, uh, Wisconsin native. They tag this guy in and accuse him directly of grooming kids. Here's the context. A slide from this school system, the superintendent staff training instructs teachers that parents are not entitled to know their kids' gender identities and it must be earned. I don't think that's really... Facilitators guide this discussion. Remember, parents are not entitled to know their kids' identities. That knowledge must be earned. Teachers are often straddling this complex situation. This is basically saying that if you have a kid who is... This is specifically training teachers to not accidentally hurt kids what if you have a kid who's gay and their parents are religious uh are, are crazy religious people and they would and the t the teacher knows that that child will be abused if they tell them the school district doesn't want these things to happen so they don't urge their teachers to tell things they s basically are saying protect the kid to the best of your ability and don't give out n information that you don't have to if the especially if the kid comes to you in uh confidence this is literally just protecting kids this is bog standard practice the same thing by the way just so you know the same thing would happen if a kid came to a teacher about an abusive situation, the 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 teacher would not would be instructed not to talk to the parent about that. If a kid was sitting in school and had a black eye and the teacher said, hey, uh, hey, why do you have a black eye? And the student goes, my dad hit me. The teacher's not going to call the parent and be like, hey, your son told me you hit me. No, they're going to be like, oh, my God, like, can we help you? Can we provide a safe place for you to go? That's funny. Twitter has banned this account. It's just back. Curious. So again, they're blowing up an individual guy sending fucking thousands of people to this random dude. Look at this. Facilitators guide this discussion just translates to groomers control this, dis this discussion. Disgusting. I remember the day when parents told their children, if someone tells you not to tell me, then telling me is the first thing you do. People say that say that are not good people. Let's continue with the article, shall we? Her anti-trans tweets especially went viral. She called on her followers to contact schools that were allowing boys in the girls' bathroom and pushed the false conspiracy theory that schools were installing litter boxes in bathrooms for children who identify as cats. Oh my fucking god. She also purported that adults who teach children about LGBTQ identities are abusive, that being gender nonconforming or an ally to the community is a mental illness, and also referred as school to schools as government-run indoctrination camps for the LGBTQ community. Bruh. Thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Uh, emu, emu Anon. Libs of TikTok is shaping our entire political conversation about the rights of LGBTQ people to participate in society, Drennan said. It feels like they're single-handedly taking us back a decade in terms of the public discourse around LGBTQ rights. It's been like nothing we've ever really seen. By March, Libs of TikTok was directly impacting legislation. DeSantis's press secretary, Christina Pushaw, credited the account with opening her eyes. Wait, for fucking real? Libs of TikTok truly opened my eyes on this. A six-second Google search will yield about a gazillion TikTok videos of current educators who couldn't be proud prouder that they're teaching their kids students about sex, sexuality, and LGBT issues. Libs of TikTok opened my eyes on this. Ron DeSantis' press secretary, Christina Pushaw, has been instructed in slandering opponents of Florida's Don't Say Gay Bill as groomers. She credits the anonymous Twitter account Libs of TikTok for her radicalization. Amazing. She and Libs of TikTok have interacted with each other at least 138 times publicly, according to a report by Media Matters. When asked by the Post about her relationship with the account, Pusha wrote, I follow, like, and retweet Libs of TikTok. My interactions with that account are public, and, she, and added that she's a strong supporter of its mission. <laughs>
I wonder what their mission is. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder. I what could it be to hurt queer people? Is that what it could be? Hmm. As the legislation progressed before eventually being signed into law on March 28th, Libs of TikTok ramped up attacks, flooding its feed with accusations of grooming. The right-wing media and influential conservative figureheads used anti-LGBT content from Libs of TikTok as fuel for their arguments. Save the children again, the absurd intensifying right-wing panic that LGBTQ per Q people are grooming minors. This is, this is talking about the citations. Fox News hosts Jesse Waters and Tucker Carlson have began featuring content straight from libs of TikTok on air, with Carlson urging his viewers to follow it before it's banned if you want to know what may be happening in your child's school. Holy fucking shit. Of course, Fox News did not respond to a request for comment. From the internet to school boards. As the account has grown in prominence, Rychik has taken steps to obscure her identity. Though she has done numerous high-profile media appearances, she has always appeared anonymously. However, when registering the domain, the domain Libs of TikTok US last October, she used her full name and cell phone number linked to her real estate salesperson contact information. Lamau, dumb as fuck. On Saturday, software developer Travis Brown, who is working on a project with the support from the Prototype Fund, an organization that backs open source projects, unearthed the account's Twitter history and posted a thread detailing information about its profile changes. Oops. God damn it. Here we go. Yes, here we go. When a reporter called the phone number registered to Rychik's real estate profile and the libs of TikTok.us, the woman who answered hung up after the f reporter identified herself as calling from the, re the Washington Post. A woman at the address listed to Rychik's name in Los Angeles declined to identify herself. On Monday night, a tweet from Glenn Greenwald confirmed the house that was visited belonged to Rychik's family. Although Rychik has claimed to run the account alone, last August, Grant Lally, a lawyer and Republican operative, filed a trademark for Libs of TikTok as a news reporter service. Yep, right there. They're trying to register a trademark. They're, they trademarked it as news reporting. Straight up. This is the sort of receipts that we bring here on Drama Mama specifically because this right here proves that the doxing idea is wrong. They are they have literally registered themselves as a news reporter service. No. It's totally justified to unmask someone who claims to be running a news a news account. Just memes though. It's just memes, guys. The harassment, the 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 blowing up people who who are just random people doing their daily lives. That's just, you know, it's just a it's just a meme though. Oh, yeah, look at this. Here's another great example, by the way. Someone just sent this to me. The Trevor Project is a grooming organization. Yeah, look at the shit that these, these, this account posts. The Trevor Project. The Trevor po Project, which is a literal organization meant to prevent trans suicide. And they call them a dr grooming organization. Fucking disgusting. Though Rychik has claimed to run the account alone... Uh, oh, yeah, Lally says he's not at liberty to, dis to comment when he was reached out to by the Post. I don't do this for money or fame, Rychik told the New York Post, which, like all other outlets interviewing here, allowed her to speak on the condition of anonymity in February while comparing herself to Project Veritas. Project Veritas, which is a literal propaganda outlet that does not tell the truth Ever, and they have dodged legal responsibility for their explicit lies. They have actually ruined the lives of multiple everyday people that they've swooped into their investigations. Project Veritas is so bad, it's it's not even funny. There is a three-part documentary about how bad Project Veritas is. They are one of the worst uh, so-called uh, journalism outlets in the entire world. They are so dishonest. I'm not some politician or blue check journalist. I feel like there are so many small stories that are so important that aren't getting out. That's what I'm here for. In other anonymous interviews, she claims to have left New York for somewhere in California, recently turning the account into a full-time job. For a while, she was soliciting donations through Venmo. While Libs of TikTok briefly had a TikTok account of its own, it was suspended for violating community guidelines. 
Last week, the account was briefly suspended for Twitter for, for, for a second time for violating uh, targeted, plat uh, targeted harassment platform rules. But Libs of TikTok continues to amass followers across the internet. It has more than 65,000 followers on Instagram, 10,000 on YouTube, and a robust presence on white right-wing YouTube competitor Rumble, along with other right-wing uh, apps like Gab and Getter. It's also building out an email database through the newsletter platform Review. Raichik has said in interviews that she crowdsources the content for the feed from a flood of messages she receives every day. In that sense, Libs of TikTok is a collective molded to the hive mind of the right-wing internet. She views her account as giving a voice and platform to concerned parents and ordinary citizens. I see a shared spirit in libs of tech talk and the appetite for it in right-wing media more broadly, which is turning neighbor against neighbor and turning any individual into an enforcer of this very strict gender regime, said Brandsetter. There's a deep sense of paranoia this rhetoric inspires, and it's extremely volatile. It's more than playing with fire. It inspires a uh, vigilante spirit. Raichik boosts that se boasts that several teachers have been fired as a result of being featured on the account. Tyler Wren, an, a former English teacher in Oklahoma, posted a video telling LGBT kids shunned by their parents that Wren was proud of them and loved them. It was featured on Libs of TikTok last week. Since being pe featured on the page, Wren has been barraged with harassment and death threats. I've always seen myself as the type of teacher to stand up for marginalized voices. I see fellow teachers on TikTok speak out for disenfranchised students and they're getting the same sort of harassment too. The popularity of libs of TikTok comes at a time when far-right communities across the internet have begun doxing school officials and calling for their execution. Oh, we, we got to read this one at some point. She needs to be executed. The far-right is doxing school officials, officials that they think are groomers. Parents of the LGBTQ plus youth have been driven out of their towns. Local school board members have reported death threats. On a recent podcast, Raichik said that as her following continues to grow, the fullest extent of her impact may not be realized until elections this fall. She has encouraged her audience to overtake school boards and to run in local elections. These people, she said, referring to members of the LGBT community, some of them are literally evil and grooming kids. They should not be in schools. They should not be teachers. Guys. It doesn't get any more open than this, okay? I've I've been telling you guys about this so much for so long. This is the opinion. This is what the right wing runs on. The most popular shit on the right is just as unhinged as the Nazis. They are just a little more careful when they say it. But just look at this. These people, referring to LGBT me uh, members of the LGBT community, some of them are literally evil and grooming kids. They should not be allowed in schools. They should not be teachers. Gay people shouldn't be teachers because they think that some, they, they've made up that a bunch of them are bad. They don't even have actual examples. Members of the LGBT community who still attempt to use platforms like TikTok to educate people on gray or on gay or trans issues are subject to intense online abuse, causing a chilling effect. Libs of TikTok is playing on fears and misunderstandings of who trans people are, while amping up extreme rhetoric and normalizing portraying queer people as inherently dangerous to children, Brandstetter said. It's hard to stoke moral panic without main characters, and the role of Libs of TikTok uh, the role that Libs of TikTok is playing is finding those characters. Now, you guys might have you might have heard me talking about long before this article came out, talking about something very similar. That how uh, I I literally said that a lot of of the way that the online uh, that online conservatives work is that they have to find new characters. Like remember they had um they had Big Red, they had that screaming girl in the yellow jacket. Remember that? Remember the remember Trigley Puff? Those were the old days. Now it's insatiable. The harassment beast is so much bigger than it used to be that they don't they're not okay with just one Trigley Puff. They're not okay with harassing the shit out of one big red. No, they need uh, a steady stream of random people that they can go harass and call groomers and call pedophiles with no evidence whatsoever on mass ruining people's lives. That is the only way that they find their satisfaction these days. It is fucked up.
Now I get replies on Twitter saying, okay, groomer, whenever I make any queer defense, uh, any defense of any queer person. Yes, that happens to me all the time too. It's, it's all over my videos, by the way. If you go look at my video comments, that's the new thing. They're all just calling everybody groomers. They just say, okay, groomer, 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 groomer. It's all over the place. I told you, this is a moral panic. They are whipping people up to kill gay people, to kill trans people. That's what they're trying to do. Why do you think they have to exaggerate so much? Why do you think that the way that the entire purpose of their argument is to portray all queer people as literal child predators? The reason they do that is because they want to encourage extreme responses. That's the goal. That's the end game of all of these people. But it doesn't end here. It doesn't end here because, of course, there's been all kinds of back and forth with between libs of TikTok and all of the others. I mean, we can go look at this right now. Let me just show you real quick. So here we have, um, uh, uh here, here we go. So here we have, you know, this back and forth. Taylor Lawrence doxing libs of TikTok. I'm the victim. Taylor Lawrence, who had millions of Bezos dollars behind her and coordinated with leftist media to dox a private citizen, is the real victim here. Actually, I think Taylor was doing her job. Like, Taylor exposed you, a malignant, vicious uh, peddler of disgusting slander. You are literally, you claim to be a news source, and all you do is peddle slander. You just accuse people falsely of crimes. Like, this is the thing that's so frustrating about the current timeline is like it feels like you it it we've reached a point a fever pitch of existence where the things that are happening are so ridiculous and bald faced that like you can't even you can't even you you can't even summarize it well. I'm like, how do I explain to somebody this person is playing victim? They're saying they got doxxed when their entire account is predicated on accusing people falsely of crimes, accusing private citizens falsely of crimes, and they're gonna play victim on being doxxed? Of course they are. Of course they're gonna do that. But I just want us to recognize how fucking ridiculous it is. They've already started conspiracy theories about Taylor Lawrence. Oh my god. Libs of TikTok doxing uncovers secret hacker government mercenary alliance. Oh my god, we have to read this. Revolver. Libs of TikTok doxing uncovers secret hacker government mercenary alliance behind regime's war on MAGA Americans. American dissidents of all stripes are ablaze with anger after the Washington Post's most repugnant reporter, Taylor Lawrence, published yet another piece trying to ruin someone more popular than her. For those not paying attention, the blazing hot libs of TikTok account simply finds TikTok videos wherein crazed liberals and LGBTQers, many of them teachers of innocent children, unabashedly reveal their deviant grooming agenda for public consumption. Bruh. Bruh! Nice. Listen, all they do is they simply find TikTok videos wherein crazy LGBTQ people are grooming people. Few people are more repugnant than Taylor Lawrence, who once falsely accused billionaire Mark Anderson of using the R slur in a clubhouse room and whose age is humorously difficult to pin down. Like, this is this is right-wing rag trash. You can tell by how it's written. But, like, look at this shit. This is like a conspiracy theory. theory. Oh, my God. Oh my god. Oh, this is proper conspiracy theory. Oh, it's properly. Oh, look at it. It never stops. They cite Ian Miles Chong. Oh, what's amazing. Fucking incredible. The left is upset that I called a woman teaching sex education to children a predator. Obviously, no context was provided. So this entire thing has been this. But guess what, everybody? It gets funnier. It gets super funny because I want to show, I want to show you something. I got a little, I got a little, I got a little, I got a little tweet. You guys, I got something funny. Ready? 
So take a look at this. Here we go. You guys ready? This was a tweet that was originally posted by... It's been now deleted. This was posted uh, earlier today. Got deleted immediately. Breaking. The group of leftists that doxed me found my house and threw eggs, paint, and dog feces at my home. They were chanting gays rule while destroying my property. I was literally attacked by a woke mob. Why would somebody do this? Shot. Chaser. Egged house. They literally used the Google images for an e a fake egged house. Straight up. Straight the fuck up. Look, here's the deleted tweet, which they deleted right away. And here's the attempt to you to to literally make up fake shit of literal made up attack. This is what we've gotten to. This is the level of, 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 of sort of like demented madness that we live in. And I want to point out that this is like, how do I explain that? Like, this is our reality now living in the Internet. In living in the era of the internet means that we are constantly contending with viral disinformation and active misinformation, um, or the other way around, misinformation and active disinformation at a breakneck pace. And the reality is, people are really bad at dealing with it. People are really bad at dealing with it. It's so fucked up. It's, it's wild. It's, it's a level of, it's one of the more concerning things because the disjointedness with which all the, the sort of like, I guess, uh, unpredictability and disjointedness with which all of this unfolds. The fact that the, the primary war, the primary front or one of the primary fronts in the right wing battle the, the right wing battle for the culture of, of America or whatever they, they think about it as is just destroying the lives of random queer people. That's what it, that's literally what they do. Whether it's, um, whether it's people like, uh, uh, like Crowder who go do man on the street stuff and they try to ruin the lives of random, you know, queer people that they think look funny or homeless people or black people, whatever they think looks funny. They try to do that. Whether it's libs of TikTok, whether it's, uh, 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 Tucker Carlson, a major part, a pillar of their approach now is taking advantage of the internet, taking advantage of the viral nature of the internet to ruin people's lives. We live in a Gamergate that will never end. I want you all to recognize that. All of this stuff, the sort of distributing contextless quotations with with extremely exaggerated personal attacks um against against members of, a, of an already marginalized group who lots of of uh let's just say uh prejudiced but not necessarily radicalized right-wing uh teenagers on the internet can jump on that is the way that gamergate worked that is the normal way for the right wing to operate now they operate these enormous enormous accounts and they're not even organic. They're not even fucking organic. Let me just let me just show you something real quick, okay? I want you to uh, I want you to 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 see this. Let me just grab this little little bit here. Hold on. Hold on one second. Okay, you guys ready? Here we go. Take a look at this. From Taylor Lawrence, I had heard that the Babylon Bee had recently provided financial backing for libs of TikTok, but I didn't have enough confirmation on the details to nail it down for my story. Seth Dillon, the CEO of the Babylon Bee, has now confirmed it himself. I think they'll also be surprised by the support she receives. I want them to know that she won't be canceled from her job because this is her job now. I've worked out a deal with her that will turn her heroic high-risk work into a career. She got so canceled that she's now a salaried Twitter user by a right-wing propaganda outlet. Yep, and it was revealed prior to this that this was the case. So I want to point something out. So we often lament the state of affairs in in uh, in America. We we talk about how racist people are, how fucking constant there is like constant transphobia and homophobia all over the place. That people are fucking terrible to one another. That the uh, that America is just full of prejudice and and un uh, you know uninformed opinions, hateful opinions that are not based on reality. And this is why, by the way, this right here is specifically why. 
I want you all to recognize that this is the problem. This is like one of the core problems that we keep having to deal with. Oh, hey, no. Yeah. Um, which is that on the right, they will literally pay someone to be terminally online. Right-wing think tanks have so much money, they have amassed so much wealth that they will literally pay people to lie on the internet. They will buy them lawyers to protect them. They will fund and bankroll the dumbest shit you can possibly imagine. And they don't even need popular support to do it because they have money. They don't need popular support to run uh, libs of TikTok. They just have the Heritage Foundation, Fox News, uh, uh, the Babylon Bee, a bunch of right-wing billionaires who will bankroll the shit out of every right-wing product. That's what we're contending with, just so you know. We are contending with, they, they project about George Soros. It's really funny. If you meet somebody who gets a George Soros buck, please fucking tell me. Please tell me who the fucking George Soros, where the fucking George Soros bucks are. Because I certainly don't get them. I don't know anybody who gets them. But I do know how fucking Coke and a number of other companies like the Heritage Foundation, or, or, or I should say organizations like the Heritage Foundation, direct money and actively fund people to be malignant shit posters on the internet. Not even shit posters. Malignant re repeat harassment uh, uh, harassment points on the internet. That's what this. That's what this really is. What the uh, what the libs of TikTok represents is a repeater. They are a a a mercenary that they can hire to ruin the lives of random queer people. Isn't that wild? Isn't that wild that that's the world that we live in right now? The world that we live in is predicated on hate groups quietly funding social media accounts to take advantage of the fact that social media is ridiculously insecure and that vulnerable people are extra vulnerable if they participate in social media and yet we're always constantly encouraged to participate in social media everyone's on social media everything requires social media a lot of websites you have to use a social media account to even register and queer people get fucking harassed queer people get attacked via social media because of shit like this this is the world we live in we live in a world where corporate kings bankroll harassment accounts and they succeed and then all of the right wingers gather together and denounce a journalist who actually reports on this fucking atrocious shit I just want people to understand how vicious this fight really is. I really want people to understand that. I want you to understand that uh, the reason why there aren't like fuckloads of trans content creators, the reason why there aren't fuckloads of uh, trans uh, musicians and streamers is because of shit like this. Is because the vast was what tends to happen is that people get snuffed out in the cradle. They start a little social media account, they make a video, and some fucking piece of shit like Steven Crowder or Libs of TikTok picks them up, inundates them with harassment, ruins their life, and they go to do something else. Because as it turns out, living a life where your job is to log online and get harassed all day isn't a fulfilling existence, even if you like doing the art. And I understand that totally. I get it because I love streaming, but I can tell you the amount of harassment is fucking exhausting and I tend to do pretty well. I tend to, to tend to handle it relatively well by all things considered. Wild. So yeah, uh, libs of TikTok. What a fucking mess. What an absolute mess. And and to think, to think, uh, yeah. Oh, there's that one. There's that one that says any teacher who comes out to their students should be, uh, uh, you know, to be fired in the shot. Now there's another thing I want to talk about, which is right here. This is an article by Alex Perrine that's called "They Know How Journalism Works and They're Just Against It." They want someone to knock on your door too, not to put you in the newspaper though. 
On Tuesday, Washington Post reporter Taylor Lorenz published a story about a repulsive creep who uses her large following online to essentially subject random LGBTQ people, especially trans people, to harassment and worse. The piece is meant to help explain who is behind the right's furious anti-trans moral panic, how the right's propaganda machine finds the main characters that help stoke the moral panic, and how this creep used that propaganda machine to grow the following that now helps provide her with new people to feed into her meat grinder. So naturally, much of the Twitter debate was about media ethics because Lauren Lawrence knocked on the creeps door. It remains a sadly common belief among many journalists that quote unquote regular people have misconceptions about journalism and the news gathering process that can be cleared up with greater transparency and better media literacy education. I think most people have essentially no opinion on the news gathering process. I imagine they think of journalists, and when they think of journalists at all, as people yelling questions at the mayor, shouting over the din of exploding flash bulbs, while mayors sort of wave their hands and say they have total faith in their police departments to apprehend the penguin or uh, investigate themselves for shooting an unarmed teenager. Or people in big coats standing on one side of rain slicked highway gesturing broadly at 10 car pileups. You know, the news. A related belief, uh, belief people in the news business sometimes express is that because the profession has done such a poor job explaining its methods, its ethical codes, and its bright lines, sometimes people become alarmed or upset when they witness what are actually common reporting practices, especially around tracking down and identifying sources, subjects, victims, and wrongdoers. This one is closer to the mark. Journalism can be exploitative and invasive and grubby. There's, in fact, an entire book about it. What's the book? The journalist and the murderer, all right? In this case, though, the thing that happened was that information was gathered in basically the simplest way possible, deemed newsworthy, and put in a newspaper. This is what many, many people, so many people, tried to explain over and over again to everyone who was mad about it. Ben Collins, a smart reporter and by all appearance a conscientious one, did one of the better versions of this sort of careful explanation of the reporting process that led to this story. You know what? Let's read it. Let's read it. Here we go. Say there are two women with the same very specific name. They live in the exact same neighborhood. One is a TikTok influencer, nice family, cute kids, loves a good handbag. One runs an anti-LGBT TikTok aggregator. She's a regular on Tucker Carlson, but never shows her face. Say the anti-LGBT TikTok aggregator blows up and her following is literally larger than the population of Vermont. Say she publicly registers her anti-gay TikTok aggregator using excuse me, her real name, and she buys a website to support what is now an anti-gay TikTok aggregator business. Say the anti-gay TikTok aggregator drives harassment towards random gay or trans public teacher teachers who happen to post on TikTok, implying they're grooming children. Say she's boosted by a series of big money, far right influencers and networks, including Fo Fox News. Then say a Twitter user figs out, figures out she changed her Twitter account name from her real name, Chaya Rychik, to her anti-gay TikTok aggregator business name. Then say people try to figure out that there are two Taya Rychiks. They start going after the apolitical one. A reporter has figured out that this is solvable. The domain record records for the anti-gay TikTok business absolve the other influencer in the same neighborhood. But it, it appears they're two different people. But the reporter still has to confirm this. The reporter calls the number associated with the gay TikTok business, anti-gay TikTok business, and they quickly hang up. Okay, what's the next step for the reporter? Is it A, see if you can confirm it in person, or B, guess and hope that you're right? If you do A, you're reporting, and if you're saving the other, and and you're saving the other Chaya Rai chick from being associated with an anti-LGBT hate account. If you do B, you're not reporting, you're guessing, and you're absconding from the hard part of being a reporter. I can see why some people would pick B. It makes it easier. It makes a vicious substack, and you don't have to leave the house. But A is what reporters do and have done for centuries. It's what the truth is. When it comes to hate accounts with big money allies, the truths. And the truth actually matters. That's pretty straightforward. Throughout the day, so we're going to jump back to the article now that we've read this thread that was cited. I think that's very straightforward. This right here makes complete sense. You go, you find out who the fuck's running an account. You dig and you do the story. It's literally, uh, it's literally the job of a journalist. Throughout the day, for some reason, people kept trying to make their own versions of this argument only geared at convincing non-decent people. Everyone was basically standing in the mouth of a pipe on top of a dam facing Tommy Lee Jones, growling, My colleague didn't violate journalistic ethics. Only Tommy Lee Jones was Sa Satra's anti-Semite. If you're attempting to persuade this creep's defenders specifically and not a general audience that what Lorenz did was ethical and that the creep's identity is newsworthy, you've made a category error. These people on this ascendant right wing just don't, don't just have 
different ideas about the role and function of journalism. They don't just believe that journalists are biased liberals. They don't just believe the media is too hostile to conservatives. They are hostile to the concept of journalism itself. As in, uncovering things dutifully and carefully and attempting to convey your findings to the public honestly. They don't want that, and they don't like it, and they're endeavoring to end it as a common practice. You're debating logic and facts with frothing bigots with a bone-deep opposition to your entire project. This new right fundamentally doesn't want any new news gathering to happen. They want a chaotic information stream of unverifiable bullshit that confirms your biases and context collapse and propaganda. Their backers, the people behind the whole project, are philosophically and materially opposed to the idea that true things should be uncovered and verified and disseminated publicly about, well, them and their projects. This may have started as a politically opportunistic war against particular outlets and stories, but has quickly blossomed into a whole worldview. It is an ideal logically coherent opposition to liberal precepts of verifiability and transparency and the holders of those precepts are too invested in them to understand what their enemy is doing the creeps account everyone in the press should understand is the model for what they will be replaced with it is not even that the right needs people to lose trust in traditional news organizations to win elections. That already happened and they won. It's more like they need people to just randomly trust whatever bullshit feels right, to get them to fall for scams and believe propaganda. In the grandest dreams of pathetic people doing the most unpaid work, the end game is the eradication of deviance from public life. I'm going to read that again. In the grandest dreams of pathetic people doing the most of the unpaid work, that means on the right, the end game is the eradication of of deviance from public life. And that's a real threat that the people opposing this should take more seriously. Upstairs from the people whose job it is to make sure old people get set up recurring payments, upstairs from them, the goal is that no one finds the boss's shell companies or offshore accounts. The mission is to prevent, stigmatize, and delegitimize the discovery and confirmation and dissemination of information about how a few people got all their money, where they keep it, and what they're doing with it, like spending it on subsidizing bigotry about trans people and getting gay teachers fired. But that is all very political, and thus our most distinguished journalists will be very allergic to hearing it. All I would like to all I would like my unbiased, objective, definitely nonpartisan reporter friends to understand is that they are debating with people that consider them the enemy, not just in a partisan sense, but in an existential one. The only correct posture to take in response is to make yourself an existential threat to their own movement. Bam. Banger article by Alex Perrine. A banger article, and I can't say I I, I I just have to say I agree with that conclusion really well. I think that's a very good article. He's on a majority report a lot. Yes, he is. He is a, a, a left leaning journalist who I think does very good work personally. So let's talk about this. Now we've gotten all the facts out. Yeah, Alex Perrine. Uh, hold on, I just closed it. Uh, one second, I can link it. I can link that article. I, I like Alex Perrine a lot. I've read a lot of his stuff. Hold on, let me grab this real quick. Here you go. Here's the linky. Boop. All right, there you go. There's the link if you want to read this article yourself. Okay, everybody, let's talk about this, okay? Let's talk about it. So, we got the facts out of this particular situation. We figured out that the uh, that the libs of TikTok account uh, was not doxxed, but named. And that was found using publicly available information. And keep in mind, again, the facts of the situation, the libs of TikTok account is nearly has nearly 1 million followers and is a business. It's not just some random private citizen. They brand themselves. And I'll open this up just to prove it because we love our receipts here on Drama Mama. Bringing you news you won't see anywhere else. And their registration, their trademark registration, is for a news source. Interesting how that works. So the facts of the situation are, li massive account libs of TikTok regularly makes false accusations against actual private citizens, usually people who have a personal social media account that they post little videos to for their, for their friends and family. That's the bulk of who's been targeted. Even when we when we rolled through just earlier on this stream, when we rolled through most of the accounts we saw libs of TikTok calling groomers were tiny accounts with no public standing. They were small. Okay. 
a journalist goes and finds out who's running this account and also discovers that there's a lot of money behind this account, that this account isn't just a meme page, that this account is being used to stem, to, to stoke the flames of disinformation, that it is actively participating in directly generating the misinformation and disinformation that's being pushed by other news sources. What we have is direct connections major news sources leaning on this mysteriously funded anonymous hate account to generate news stories that are disgustingly biased, disgustingly slanted, totally misrepresentative of the truth. And that right there is the facts of the situation. Now, I told you this one was going to be a little hard for me to be super even on because I think this is relatively clear cut. Although I understand a lot of people have a knee jerk reaction to doxing. This is the part where I give my final my, my sort of roundup on everything that I think about it. So this is the part of drama mama where we're no longer talking about specifically the facts of the situation, but we're instead talking about my opinion. Um. We've read a couple of different opinions. We've we've engaged with a couple of different uh, pieces of reporting on this. We've gotten down the information. We've gone and looked at the actual account itself. We've seen some of the tweets with our own eyes. We've seen them attempt to fake an attack on their own house with our own eyes. All of that is forever recorded in this incredible VOD. Like, subscribe. Uh, and now we've come to the point where I give my, my sort of opinion. And my opinion is... I'm glad that libs of TikTok got revealed. I hope that they get more revealed, in fact. What, lib what libs of TikTok is doing is heinous, and there should be no ifs, ands, or buts about it. What they're doing is genuinely heinous. Um, it, isn't just, it isn't just posting. It isn't even uh, just opinionated, uh, hateful news writing. What they do is they are... They are manufacturing consent they are manufacturing from the get-go a world that they can then project their worldview onto they mislead they are a part of a uh, a a chain of of media that is that is devoted to misinforming people remember fox news was pushing coronavirus hoax fox news pushed the uh pu pushed the election uh, the election fraud hoax. Fox News is a massive... And, and guys, this isn't even partisan. We can step out of partisan shit right now because we all know that there's partisan bias all over the place. But what Fox News does is not just partisan bias. What Fox News does is they literally lie. They are not even telling the truth. They are building their followers into an alternative world that is dangerous, a world that is telling falsehoods in the name of pushing forward a certain worldview. And in a lot of ways, they're succeeding. They're succeeding at, at luring all kinds of people into a perpetual cycle of misinformation, into a sort of uh, a, a baseless uh, habit of consuming anything that confirms your pre-existing biases without any challenge. And they know that this is advantageous to them because there's a lot of prejudiced people out there. They're banking on passive racism, prejudice. Um, they're banking that they can stoke that, that they can take advantage of people's emotions, that they can take ex advantage of people's fear to sell a completely false worldview, a worldview that isn't even remotely concerned with facts, that isn't even remotely concerned with reality. And Libs of TikTok is a part of that. And Libs of TikTok should be held responsible for that. Libs of TikTok should be held responsible for all of the harm that they've put out onto the world. Every last bit. Simple. It's as simple as that. When you run an account whose entire job is to falsely accuse people of, of crimes, it is not, I don't think it is, uh, I don't think it's even remotely spicy. I don't even think it's remotely controversial that that account should be taken down, that that account should be 
uh, should be reported on by journalists. It should be exposed. It should be prevented from having any further influence because what it serves as is nothing more than a massive torrent of misinformation and active harm. And keep in mind, we know of the harm. They admitted it. They admitted getting multiple teachers fired. The only reason they can get away with it is because it's stochastic. Because what they can do is they can put out a video that says, look at this pedophile. And then they know their followers because it's implicit. They'll just tap their nose. They know their followers are going to go and send letters. They're going to go and harass that person. They're going to go and show up at their house. They're going to go and tell their boss. They're going to go and dump all their information on 4chan or, all of the, or any of these other websites where they regularly dox random innocent people who didn't do anything. This guy. This guy right here, the guy that they, the guy who gave the Merry Christmas message and said, I love you, all of you students whose parents aren't loving to you, I love you. They ruined this guy's life. And they're getting paid to do it. They're getting paid to do it by right-wing sources. Right-wing sources that have names. Right-wing sources that have operators. Right-wing sources that can be stopped. And they should be. I think that a lot of times that in like the post Trump era, we've forgotten like what life was like before. This was not normal before. And I don't mean that as like things were better before. What I'm saying is it's worsening. Obviously, there has always been issues with irresponsible reporting. There's been movies made about irresponsible reporting. Um, of course, I believe that there, it is very possible for people to report irresponsibly. I think it's possible for journalists to make big mistakes. But what we have now is a world in which an account can literally just ruin people's lives. Their entire purpose is to damage random queer people. They exclusively target. You could literally gather all of their posts and gather data on the fact that all of their most of their the vast majority of their posts um t focus on lgbtq people and and then when you point that out people just go well i don't know i don't really know anymore i i don't know i don't, you know maybe maybe they're just a shit poster no our brains have melted our society is not functioning our our society has has gotten to a point where harassing random gay people is a a thing that people give air to they go well what if it's just a shit posting count should they really be taken to, should they really be banned should they really be exposed the answer is obviously yes anybody who is able to do that much damage to other people should be held to account anybody it doesn't matter who it is if you're fucking dumping and ruining people's lives, if you're making massive criminal allegations against people from your Twitter account, you don't get to just the, use the, it's just the internet, it's just Twitter excuse. By the way, this is the type of, by the way, this right here is the type of shit that they, that they tweeted just now. They, they tweeted this just a few, just a few hours ago. We should ampl amplify and bring LGBTQIA and CRT voices to the front. Okay, we can do that. Then they post a bunch of, you know, these sort of images. And they go, oh my god, not like that. Well, it's interesting. It's nice that this is how they, uh, you know, this is how they, port you know, they portray themselves comically. But we know what they're doing. They're not amplifying voices. They're lying about people. They amplify a voice by literally fabricating a crime and accusing that person of the crime and then falling back on the fact that it's just the internet. But again, I, I always try to do this. I want people to understand. Can, can we just have a moment of, uh, of understanding here? Conservatives really do not give a shit about the truth. I want you to understand that. They don't care. Okay? I mean that. I've been saying this. Since I started streaming, I grew up conservative, okay? I grew up really conservative. They do not care about the truth. They don't. And the reason why I say they don't care about the truth is because the truth is what they believe. That is literally how it works. That's it. It's not, there is, there is no 
within the conservative mind, they don't believe in a worldview that believes in checking things. They believe in a worldview of divine right, of, um, of sort of intuitive values. If you feel something, that means it's natural. If you don't, then it's not. Uh, if you don't like it, it must be unnatural. Uh, they project their worldview onto everyone else. They have every conservative, not even the religious conservatives, every conservative has a universalist worldview where they believe that every person on the planet follows the same rules as them. And the rules that they believe in are that there are better people and worse people and good people deserve good people in their mind deserve to be on top of the bad people and it just so happens that for most conservatives how they determine good people is usually based on your intrinsic traits is your skin color correct is your sexuality correct are you are you not deviant do you belong are you normal quote unquote that's the that is the world of conservatives that is the world they believe in they have a world that's true to them and everything that's challenging that is a lie whether or not it reflects reality or not because remember the heart of the conservative movement is christianity that is the heart of american conservatism not all conservatism but specifically american conservatism a lot of conservatism is rooted in christianity and christianity has a worldview that is independent from reality as in you can't check it it's not checkable christians believe and conservatives therefore believe in a in a true order that must be worked towards that that like they don't believe that things are um are complicated they don't believe that things are nuanced they don't believe that things have uh have um multiple angles that could be equally valid they just believe that their worldview is the correct one and that they deserve to be on top and they will lie and we show this over and over and over and over again the degree to which conservatives will lie about anything they will lie in the face of overwhelming evidence to the contrary And we're seeing this to the degree like this is why I tell people we need that people need to be more ruthless in this uh, in their battle with right wingers. Right wingers are so they are so willing to lie. They are so willing to distort. And it's super important that every person in this modern uh, modern future, if you're even remotely politically involved, you should learn how to parse, how to have some level of media literacy. I have a video about media literacy where I talk about it. Um, but in general, become skeptical. Become skeptical and don't play nice with these fuckers. These people will lie to your face. Sound Judgment says, it's not in intrinsic to all Christianity, but to conservative fundamentalist Christians who control American Christian. That's true. Yes, there are branches of Christianity. Okay, it's really complicated. There are branches of Christianity that aren't as dogmatic, that aren't as um, hateful, um, that aren't as strict. But keep in mind, a lot of those got like those, a lot of those branches of Christianity have been cut out of Christianity. It's very weird. Um, this, this, there's a long history of, of sort of like, um, how do we okay various influences have had hegemony in christianity for for example an example of this is um you know uh in medieval times it was the catholic church the catholics had an incredible hegemony over christianity to the degree that they declared many books that were written by christians to not be christian texts because they didn't agree with them um some people may have heard of this the the uh the Nicene Convention. The Nicene Convention was a bunch of influential Christians who got together to decide which books were going to count and which books were not going to count. So that and this has happened. Events like this have happened through Christianity many, many, many times in the past. Um, and of course, now there are and there always have been branches of Christianity, but they get cut out of mainstream Christianity, and it's a whole internal culture struggle. Struggle, and it's very messy. What is important? Um, what is important is to understand that conservatives will, they will not be shamed. They will not be, uh, you can't point out their hypocrisy because to them, they don't believe in a hypocrisy. To them, any decision that they take, even if they lie, cheat, mislead, steal, 
All of that is okay because they are advancing a vision of the world that they believe in. It is truly the most Machiavellian of Machiavellian. Liberals lose so bad to conservatives because liberals always underestimate what conservatives actually believe. Liberals pr project this sort of like general reasonability, but reason isn't valued by conservatives. Reason isn't valued. All that matters is uh, belief, traditionalism, dogma, and status quo. That is what matters to them. And nothing else. We cannot fight. We cannot fight heinous forces like this if we have the wrong idea about what we're dealing with. And this is a great example. Keep in mind that Libs of TikTok is hardly the first account to do this. Guys, you could even, like most of the Twitter accounts of, of the big conservative figures do functionally the same thing. Think about this. What is, um, what was, uh, what was, what was Ben Shapiro's big rise to fame? Do you guys remember what the memes that got Ben Shapiro started? Ben Shapiro started by going onto college campuses and blowing the fuck out of random college students. That's it. That's what he did. He would go and find random kids to embarrass for his television show. And those char those people would become the main character of the week. They would become the screeching SJW. And of course, it's a very tailored, controlled image. Uh, you know, Ben Shapiro doesn't publish the times that go bad. Ben Shapiro frames all of his questions very carefully. He has a certain approach. He doesn't let them control the mic, things like that. There's a lot of steps that are taken to control the situation. But they get their enemies. They get their cringy feminists. They get their stupid liberals. It is all all of this, all of the conservative order is about lulling people into a certain worldview, selling them on the idea that the world is full of a bunch of pedophile groomer uh, TikTok SJWs with blue hair that are coming for your kids. And they want to convince they want they need that worldview. They need that worldview in place because that's what allows them to do what comes next. Do you know what comes next? I do. I know what comes next. I think we all know what comes next. Once you've declared your enemies as uh, the pedophile, groomer, child-killing, um, horrible people that are living in your walls, what happens next? Do you think people will take action? Yeah.